Hi, I'm Cameron, and I don't just read comics, I love them. On today's episode of Cameron Reads Comics, my friend Hannah and I are talking about the Image Comics graphic novel Bad Weekend by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. This is one of my favorite creative teams working in comics, and we're always glad to give another book to Hannah to read. Also, my computer is old, and there's a little static during the last two minutes of this episode, so just a heads up, please forgive me for low-budget podcasting. And remember to go follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter, as well as clobbering that like button and leaving us a rating and review on iTunes. Now, here is your episode on Bad Weekend. Comics won't just break your heart. Comics will just kill you. Hal Crane should know. He's been around since practically the beginning, stuck at an out-of-town convention, waiting to receive a Lifetime Achievement Award Hal's Weekend takes us on a dark ride through the secret history of a medium that's always been haunted by crooks, swindlers, and desperate dreamers. Okay, so first and foremost, today's episode of Cameron Reads Comics is not dedicated to Jake. It is dedicated to everyone else because <laughs> because this was supposed to be an episode on Deadly Class. We've been trying to do that episode literally since week two of Cameron Reads Comics. True. So I've and, heard you guys talk about it for that long. Literally, uh, it is. It's. Anyways, so this de- this episode is dedicated to everyone else that isn't Jake, but we have a great guest for you who's actually speed read a book for us <laughs> this week. I am a hero. We have a special guest <laughs> <laughs> that, that speed read a book for us this week, and that is Hannah Bader. Um, not only is today she Hannah Bader, but she's I- also birthday girl. <laughs> <laughs> so happy birthday. My gift for you is this platform. So. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Okay, so nowhere else I would rather be at eight AM on my birthday, honestly. Honestly, there's a lot of places I'd rather be. <laughs> Ooh. In my bed, mostly. Gosh, I get yeah. sleepy. So today's episode is on Bad Weekend by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. Um Hannah, actually, this is Hannah's second foray into Comic books? This is her second comic. Or second comic. Third, re- third read. No. Or three, three attempted because you did oh, yeah. try to read You're something. Right. I attempted another one. That's and, true. And so now we are on. It turns out I only like Ed Brubaker and Sam Phillips. So Sean Phillips. Sean Phillips is. Um, that's how much I love him. Honestly, that's that's <laughs> great. That's great. Have do you watch? By the way, do you watch Westworld ever? I uh, I watched the. First season. Ed Brubaker is one of the writers on Westworld. Isn't that mm, fun? That makes sense. I that checks out for him actually. You know he's a, he's a special guy. Um, so Hannah, I guess first question. Um, the first story that you ever read, especially for the podcast, was My Heroes Have Always Been Junkies by the same team. Mm-hmm. This is takes place in the criminal universe, which is just kind of the umbrella of titles that uh, are going on. You know what I mean? By yeah. that creative team. Yeah. So how did this compare to the first one you read? Uh, well, I did notice I had the same problem that I said with My Heroes Have Always Been Junkies, which was that the the first time around when I read that one, I was like, I didn't know. I didn't really feel like super attached. Like I didn't love it. And then the second time I read it, I was in love with it. And I felt like reading this one, I was like, oh, I, I wish I had had more time to read it because I think a second time around I might have liked it more um in a weird way my heroes of always junkies is way more relatable to me <laughs> not in not, yeah not it, in like i see where you're the junkie from. way but just like it's about a young girl and like her life and things that happen to her and that development of of her as a character mm-hmm. whereas like i mean you know like i don't know comics i don't know comic conventions yeah i don't it, it's it was a world way out of my realm so I feel like while I was reading it, I was also kind of, like, playing catch-up the whole time. Um, 
but I, I mean, I, I enjoyed it and it was easy read and it was like, I was into the story for sure. Yeah. I just think if I had had a second time around, I probably would have felt more like for the characters. Yeah. And you know, this, I knew, I knew as I gave it to you that this might've been like out of your wheelhouse because like, it's very much a critique. So the way I like to describe this book that I kind of realized this read through was it's not quite a representation of like some some books as you read them will like break down like the mm-hmm. medium of comics and, and the capacity that it has within itself. So like uh, a book that I recently loaned Jesse uh, was Mr. Miracle by Tom King. That entire book is done in nine panel so on every page, there's only nine panels. So mm-hmm. there's three three boxes, th- three rows of three right. boxes. And the way that they use that like method of storytelling and like conveying story, it kind of really breaks down the capacity of what comic books are able to convey. This book, in Bad Weekend, is very interesting because I thought it it did something entirely different, which it uh, it kind of broke down the industry of comic yeah. books, which yeah. was you know. I just I'm obviously like I I love the industry, but then I also all the all the history with creators and stuff like this because I think this story and not it's fictitious, but like some of the creators they were mentioning are real creators. Okay, I was gonna ask you that yeah. like some of the names because they mentioned like Marvel and like some other stuff, and so then I was like, oh, are they using like the other guys that they talk about? Like, are those yeah real people? Oh yeah, but I also think that. Hannah's very passionate about hitting her mic today. But I, I, I always hit my mic, so it's okay. I was like, nobody's going to hear that, but then you just... You're a real podcaster now. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, anyways, I was going to say, I feel like the theme, or not so much the theme, but like the the plot and like the transformation, it's like, it, it's, it's, it's a theme that I feel like I could see in many industries. Like... Yeah. It's not just like the guy, you know, him being a writer and him being like getting an award, but not feeling like he really even wants to accept the award and being bitter towards his colleagues and yeah. all this stuff. I'm like, I, I kind of just like put it as if I was watching or like reading about like something, honestly, like a screenwriter or like somebody in Hollywood. Like it felt like a story that could have been told regardless of what. Yeah. The profession was yeah. not to take it away from him from no. comics. I just think like that it that wasn't it wasn't like a hard storyline to like grasp. Yeah, and, and and especially those parts like what, a lot of the questions that I have for you cuz I'm like I don't have too many based on like Comic-Con experiences. And I think this also is a story that kind of speaks for itself. Yeah. Um I, I didn't have too many questions to come off of it, but uh I thought that uh everyone can relate to, you know, like Number one, a crotchety old man and the yeah. I, the idea of meeting your heroes, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And them kind of falling short. And so I thought that this was a story that conveyed that really well. And, like, going back to kind of the comic creator stuff, like, if you look at some of the names that – I wrote them down, uh, but it was just, like, some of the names that they were mentioning was, like, classic comic creators. Like, Carmen Infant- – or they didn't mention Inventino. They mentioned uh, – oh, my gosh – Gardner Fox or like Mm -hmm. uh, Wally Wood is a huge one. He's a very tragic figure in like comics. And if you ever look up for for my fans, go look up Steve Ditko. Uh, He is the luminary artist who co-created Spider-Man. And he was a notorious recluse. Like people considered him the J.D. Salinger of comics where like he didn't want anything quite to do with his creation. Mm -hmm. He's like, I was just doing a gig. Yeah, you know I mean, and yeah. people, you know, you you've definitely seen how people cling on to Spider Man. Yeah, you know, and so he's kind of like one to be separate from that. He was just, you know, do, doing his job. Right. And so this, the uh, Wally guy, I kind of had a feeling might have been real because of the way that they talked about him. Yeah, they talked about. And like, I was like, oh, that sounds. Yeah, and he's like clinically. More. He was clinically depressed. I'm pretty sure he committed suicide. Like mm. he was just a very tragic. He co-created Daredevil. Like that's how. Uh, he he had a major like influence on the industry, and so yeah. number one, like them name dropping all of those people yeah. is kind of an Easter egg to like the so- guy in the car. Though he wasn't real. I don't think he was real. Okay. Yeah, I think that the direct ones because I'm like I don't know every old school comic creator. There was like one or two names I didn't know, but uh, otherwise. Um, but I think going back to this story being about the crotchety 
Yeah. Oh man, I just really like. I think it made me think about the times that I've met my heroes, and there have been people at conventions that I've met, like at cons, and they, I like put them on a, on a pedestal, and they were just yeah, kinda, yeah. they're crotchety, and I was like, oh, like. That's so funny when you when you sent over the questions, and then it said like, what, I'm sorry, I'm gonna skip You're like fine. a couple on your list, but the one that was about like, how do you feel about the line or whatever about like never meet your heroes type of thing yeah yeah and it's weird because a couple of days or sometime last week at work somebody was talking about that and somebody somebody at work was talking about i think it was when they met joel tudor and they were like really bummed or something (sighs) like that okay for context we're we work in the surf industry and we actually have a little we working at the shop that we do we kind of get really more FaceTime with other like reps, sales reps and like, you know, figures. Yeah. Uh, Joel Tudor is a world famous longboarder. And yeah. He, and I, I could be wrong. I, but I think it was Joel I, Tudor that somebody had said like, Oh, they were kind of bummed after they met him because it oh, changed yeah. the way that they looked at him as like the kid who just used to grow up watching him surf and yeah. like whatever. And so we were, and then, and then somebody said like, yeah, man, like never, never meet your heroes. And then yeah. that night I went home and, we, my roommates and I watched a movie, and then Mia, who was my roommate, who I've mentioned like a thousand times, she asked the question to Jess and I, my other roommate, if you guys were in line at co- for coffee one day, and there was any celebrity behind you, and you and you got to have like a, like a two sentence conversation with them, like you said something to them and they said something back, who who's that celebrity that you would want it to be? And we all were like, I don't know. And then I said like, I don't want to pick. Yeah, my a celebrity who I who I love so much and who I think the highest of because I'm terrified. Well, this could literally never happen because I'm sure he's an angel among men. But I'm like, <laughs> what if I met Sam Rockwell and I was oh. I was so severely upset? Like, I don't want to because I love who he is in my head oh my and like gosh. the versions of him that I I think again. If he, I think he's wonderful, and I bet you I'd have a wonderful conversation. I with him. think that'd be an interesting cup of coffee. <laughs> it would be, but that's the thing is, it's not even. It was just like. A one-liner kind of thing. Like, you say something to them, and they catch the joke, and they say something back, and that's it, right? So, I, But we were talking. I just, I just go to be like, hey, man, Charlie's Angels, am I right? Like, that's my one line. Of the entire body of work, that's what I'm leaning on. Yeah, well, that's a really good. That's where I started. So I, so that, I don't know where I was going with that, but my point is, is to your question of how do you feel about the meeting your heroes thing? We've talked a lot about this in the last week. And so that's, that has been on my mind. Yeah. I think that, you know, just the idea. I, and again, like I'm, like I said, I think I learned a lot of kind of that stuff working here mm-hmm. and just getting that FaceTime with, you know, reps or cause a lot of, people who are pro athletes or at least in the serve industry will go and then be sales reps and, you know, monitor stock for stuff. And we, so I get kind of FaceTime with like people that I really used to like admire and I, not, not to say I don't admire them anymore, but you know, they're not in the forefront. They're not in the spotlight right. like they were. And so, uh, I realized, I realized a lot of things through working here, which is just kind of like, they want to be treated like normal people. Mm-hmm. You know, and for for example, Christian, my best friend, was here and we went to some party. Oh, my God. Was it the one that I went to? Yes. It was at O'Neill. <laughs> and like earlier that evening, we had met Corey Lopez, who's a f- really famous Hawaiian surfer. He's a great he, – homie ribs. And um, we, we saw that we saw Corey Lopez and he was like pitching us his new company. It's actually here. We'll plug it. A great company, Corksicle. Corksicle. <laughs> and they make like – like insulated water bottles and cups and they're great. I, and I have like 20 of them. I literally have at least six. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so many. Big Cork School fans. <laughs> uh, but uh, I have one in my car now that I think about it. <laughs> um, he, so Corey came in and I, you know, I, didn't, I wasn't a huge fan. I was like, oh, I've seen what he does. He's a cool guy. I didn't know too much about him. And so I was kind of just like, hey man, what's up? Like, how are you doing? And then that night Christian got enamored. Mm-hmm. And as we used to do. As <laughs> As in last week. As, in, <laughs> as, as I in, used to do when I was 27, and uh, now I'm 28, so oh, I don't. Gosh. <laughs> Hannah's above it all. Um, but Corey Lopez was there, and Christian, who loves him and his old Lost videos a lot more than we... Mm-hmm. The, I had no idea who he was. He, yeah, 
you know he's like best friends like Andy Irons or he was. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. I know who he is now, but yeah. that day that I met him, I had no idea. And which so, is why, honestly, he was very nice to me. He was, I had he no was very idea nice, and I was like, I thought him and I were buddies because I wasn't like just you know like fingerling out like yeah. you saw Robert Pattinson. Robert Pattinson came to Kate and Surf Shop, and he is Batman now. That is, uh, <laughs> that is a story we should have mentioned long before. So far, I am justified. <laughs> I, was, I freaked out for He was Edward Cullen at the time, though. Yeah, but you know, and now I kept he's it back. cool. I was like, oh my gosh. And we were you... like, Cameron, go away. I said, do you need to find anything? And he said, no. That's my one liner <laughs> story with Robert Pattinson. <laughs> I'm just saying, I kept it cool. And it did not disappoint. I, and then, you know, the best part was, is he knew we recognized him, and so he sent his, like, yep. sidekick to go And he pay went for him it. in the car. <laughs> TBD if that actor will be cast as Robin. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but oh, man. I guess long anyway, story short, yeah. they want us to treat them like normal people. But then I've had times too where I meet someone, and uh, it's just like they're everything you wanted them to. You be. know, when I go to a convention, because a lot of people will be Cameron. Who's the number one person? Because I'm into movies and I'm into TV yeah. and like actors and celebrity fame. I'm just into it. You know, it's yeah, a fascinating part of pop culture. But really, I, I hold comic book writers – like, if I ever met Ed Brubaker or Sean Phillips, uh-huh. I would freak out. And so – They're co-authors, right? I'd, I'd argue they're co-storytellers, yes. Okay. Because Ed Brubaker writes the panels out, and then Sean Phillips will obviously draw them in a perspective that changes, you know, narratively. Oh, God, but it's exactly. all collaborative. So Ed Brubaker does the, like, actual writing. He like, writes, the words yes. come from him. He writes the script. Because I thought he was – uh, and very, very well spoken. And yeah. like his 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 yeah. words and his thoughts came across so so beautifully. Yes, and so yeah, I guess we should get back on the story. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> I took us on a long ass t- tangent right there. It's okay, You're, it's your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Like I'll 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 allow it. Um, but yeah, no, Ed Brubaker. Yeah, I think I, he might just. I, I've realized after doing the podcast, I'm just going to give people like. I kind of oh here's something to try out here's something to try out uh-huh. and like you find their tones and then I'm like Lauren Vera is pretty much gonna do Darwin Cook books from now on you're gonna do Ed Brubaker <laughs> <laughs> like, Russell's gonna do Brian K Vaughn we know how it's gonna go so um, for yeah when it comes to Ed Brubaker he is he's just one of the best writers in yeah. comics and like you can't I don't think you can argue that point. Uh, and I think uh, this this series. Okay, let's just go back into the book. Uh, how'd you feel about the art? Because this book, again, I think this one and My Heroes Have Always Been Junkies are my two favorites of this entire like line mm-hmm. because the, because of the art. But specifically, Jacob Phillips is Sean Phillips' son. He's the one who does the colors. Oh no way! Isn't that great? And I'm like, yeah. he, his coloring is well, they're... amazing. Yeah, I mean, honestly, even the the two, they're very clearly from the same. Like, this one in my case of like, Yes. Right off the bat, like, as soon as you handed it to me, I was like, like, I would, like, they're so similar. I mean, this one's darker inside. Like, the, the tones are a little bit darker than... My heroes have always been junkies. Yeah. I thought. But not in, like, a, not in, like, a bad, it's just a, it's a different story. It's a different tone. Yeah. Uh, I love the artwork. I loved it in the other one, too. And I really liked it in this one. I I did notice though. I tend to read it kind of like, like I'm reading a book though, or like a novel, and so I would kind of forget to like absorb the pictures. That it, that get used to that feeling. Okay, because <laughs> I I kept catching myself like, oh, I didn't even look at at the images the last two pages. I was just just reading, 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 and then I would be like, okay, let me, and then I go back and like do a little recap. And that's probably why it took me so long to read it the first, well and. Are I you only had a day, on, you... <laughs> but the first time I sat down to read it, I couldn't get through the whole thing, and that was probably why. Um, and Hannah literally was like, "Because I gave it to her, you know, at the at the last hour, or the day before we were supposed to record, I probably yeah. I'd given her originally twelve hours to read it, and then I was like, you know, it's on me for bringing it so late. And then she texts me that night and she says, "Hey, I was gonna read it, but then we ended up watching Endgame, <laughs> and I'm like." Like I'm gonna say, you can't you can't read the comic content because you're watching comic content. I'm like, no matter what, I was I was, I was well. That day just turned out to be like a weird Marvel day because we like Those are the best days. Had this huge brunch at my house in the morning, as we do sometimes on Sundays. Don't know what that has to do with Marvel, but okay. <laughs> because then we were like 
<laughs> in like a brunch coma and we were just laying on the couch and we were like oh my god we forgot to watch the new wandavision so then we watched the oh. newest episode but then we all had questions that we just kind of couldn't remember and then also obviously we were just confused because i was like who's what's happening who's that why but then like <laughs> For the most part, it was like, wait, I can't remember Ultron. Wait, I can't remember. And then for whatever reason, we were like, well, we could just, we have Disney Plus. Like, let's just put something on. And so we watched Infinity War and then took a break for like two hours. And it. then they were like, should we just watch Endgame? And I was like, yeah, probably. So we just, I, I think all I did on Sunday, which is why I didn't get to the book, was because I was just really immersed in finishing off the movies that I've already seen like five times each, but. I've never been prouder. I just really want to iterate that. <laughs> um, I cried again. Yeah, so I'm never going to be mad at you for that for enjoying comic book content instead of enjoying comic book content. So, um, and then remember, guys, this episode's not dedicated to Jake. This could have been recorded weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, but to the point of the story and the writing and the art and all of it, the I had to remind myself to absorb the whole picture yeah. with the words and the whole thing, just, just to get a better like feel for what was going on. But also I, I think I might have said this, a similar thing in my heroes have always been junkies, but I'm always kind of surprised always is in the two times I've read a freaking comic. I'm sure. The two times is I, like I the get it. small words. No, that's not what I meant to say. The <laughs> I'm like, that's called like font <laughs> or like text size. <laughs> I meant like how little of words there actually are. Oh yeah. Like the, it's, they still like really hit home and like you, there's so much impact in a, in few words. I'm yes, yeah, no, no, no. Because your face. I'm like, I was just thinking. <laughs> okay, I was thinking about a guest that was on the podcast once, and they were just like calling it, like, yeah, it was exactly what I thought, and it was like a picture book for children. And I'm like, I mean, I guess, but it's it's kind of what you're saying, where you were surprised. I imagine I don't want to put words in your mouth, but yeah, no, you might speak by, better than I did just now by the uh, the capacity for storytelling within the panels themselves, as opposed to the words. No. Okay, well, I'm a, I'm a big dumb idiot. <laughs> that was really well spoken. I really was rehearsing. <laughs> you that. said that really well. Uh, kind of almost the opposite. I was what I was trying to say. Damn. <laughs> what I was trying to say was that there's not okay. So like a word count, right? In like a comic book, is it going to be a lot less than a word count in like let's say a novel? And yes. what I'm trying to say is that for how uh... little. Of dialogue and of words there are, there's a lot of impact in the yeah. words chosen, which is why I feel like Ed Brubaker is very impressive and talented yeah. to me because I really like words and I really like reading and I really like, yeah. but I, I think it's really amazing at how much he's able to put out there in small amounts of text. Oh, absolutely. And he is just a freaking master. To the point where you care and you understand and you sympathize and you know, as opposed to, you know, books and authors who can take a whole page to describe a feeling. Yeah. And this I, guy does it in, in six words, seven words, whatever. But to also rebuttal and give credit to Sean Phillips, it, it wouldn't be that simple without the collaborative art. Right. So my point was right. I just really were. <laughs> no, but um, no, I just think I Ed Brubaker ob obviously has that potential as a writer because he's that great of a writer. Yeah. But without Sean Phillips's art and like, you know, the moment that you're able to like kind of see the feelings conveyed that they're trying to you via right. expression on the face of the character or how whatever it be. Uh, I think that's kind of sometimes where the artists will not get credit and i'm not saying that's you i'm just saying i've seen that in, mm -hmm. in people mm -hmm. receiving no, these, definitely. this medium and so i'm like this is a lightning in a bottle kind of team or maybe it's not anymore because it, they keep putting out great work mm -hmm. and so uh this is very much yeah i think that i i agree with what you're saying and, and i'm always impressed by that too like yeah. i was watching oh i was watching bachelor last night this isn't quite spoilers <laughs> this comes out on a wednesday and if you're listening to this in the future, the season's probably over already. But I was reading, there's a point in Saga of story I really love where 
Brian K. Vaughn writes about a child saying something really nasty to another child. Mm -hmm. And he says, it's important to see someone's face as you hurt them. And someone had said something really nasty in like the in the bachelor and pretty much Victoria said something really mean to a girl and the girl started crying. And Mm -hmm. it reminded me of that where I was Mm -hmm. like, Oh yeah, no, you get to see the face of someone you just really hurt. Yeah. And so I think that you kind of have that. It's amazing how that little anecdote that could have taken pages to convey that message was done so quickly through the medium of comic books. Yeah. Um, Going to Bad Weekend, because I feel like we're dancing around, because I didn't have very many questions this week. It's a very short story. Um, How did you feel about the character of Hal Crane himself and the way that he was conveyed? Because I also want to take it from the perspective of meeting your heroes, but I feel like everyone has had a shitty boss, too. I have not. Okay, well. Because I've had. Must be nice. One job my whole life. And. And I can't say that Jesse's a bad boss because, one, he listens to this podcast. So even if I thought that, I couldn't say it publicly. I'm like, I'm not going to say names, but I've worked <laughs> at a surf shop before and that <laughs> boss. <laughs> um, So I don't really have that experience. But also everybody has an experience in somewhat of, like, relatability there. Um, I was going to say somebody has an experience with a crotchy old man. But, like, I don't. I don't. I don't really either. Oh my gosh! Really, I had a. I know. Who, well, no, I take that back. Every every man that comes into Katie's just going to say that. And then man. I was like, "Wait, am I allowed to say that?" On um, no, we we're just talking about our retail recording. experience. And yeah, we're... anybody who comes in to work uh, that's like over the age of, I would say sixty, but honestly, it starts in their fifties. You know, uh, we are we are not bashing our customer base. We are just saying that. Sometimes you have customers, and this isn't everyone. Every, every you know, it's 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 hard to say every single customer that way because we have some really sweet, we do have elderly people. Customers. But it is people. You know, there's people that will come in and tell you how to do your job, uh, no matter your capability or basically the resources that resources at hand. They will tell you how to do it, and I would consider that crotchety. But that's in all yeah. fields too. Also, yeah, we're totally. talking customer and, service, right? Any well, yeah, any especially any job in customer service. Mm-hmm. I think that's probably a shared experience. But um, I did not, I did not like him. How Crane? Yeah, sorry. Jumping back to the story, I didn't like him, but I definitely didn't like. Hey, I was just like, oh man, this guy's like, like for for the sake of um, the assistant who's like watching, who's supposed to be like. Getting him from place to place on time. Yeah. I was, like, wanting him to be more, like... Great, great. Uh, like, just easier, great, you know? Yeah. Yeah, because oh, I was like, wait, oh, man. Not, not the main... Not the narrator, but the woman at the convention. No, 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 the narrator. Oh, okay. What, did they ever give a name for him? Uh, Probably. I forgot it, though. Yeah, I don't know if... I honestly don't know if they did. Well, that's kind of cool, though. Um... Yeah, so if like for his sake, I was like, oh my gosh, just make this easier on him. Um, but then by the time you get to the end, it's like this is this problem I have every single time. Like I don't <laughs> like somebody, and then I'm like, well, all right, I see why they did that. They you know, okay, yeah, I see why they are the way they are. But the, he pretty he didn't have very many redemptive qualities. No, he didn't. But you're kind. But it's okay to not like this guy. I, I think, mean, I thought when he sucker punched that guy, I was like, "Ooh!" Oh, I was so glad that happened. Oh, I thought I that wanted was, to I see it was some blood. For. Oh no! And oh, you know, it's funny. Oh, I love that. I loved it. I feel like it was so like with it within the character they were describing to have had some sort of resolve at the ceremony. Yeah. I thought would have been cheap, and then so well, to yeah, see I mean, him, him going up and doing like a normal acceptance speech, I was like, "What?" Oh, exactly. And no. then he just goes in, it. and like, you know. I just think of, uh, not just crotchety old people, but I just think of Hal. I think of Hal as this, like, guy, you know, who, he squandered a lot of his potential. And so, yeah. and like how people do when they, frankly, squandered their potential. Right. They will shift the blame onto everyone else. Although, he is the one who sold all of his art. He's the one who did all these things. And yeah. then, so to not reap the benefits. And yes, there's definitely a part of him that got kind of ripped off by the industry and the creators who w- want to celebrate him. I've seen it happen. Uh, anyone, go look up Alan Moore um, and, and Watchmen in DC and Miracle Man. Anyways, uh, but seeing him 
blame other people and then potentially get some sort of redemption or like it and it really kind of what he wanted is a a royalty and they were offering him that but then to have him spit in the face of that which i thought that was a very true moment to the character and i really Mm -hmm. liked it i thought that it was at the uh, at the end when he's talking about the car crash and how he was supposed to replace um the one yeah the one guy though i don't know if it was just the way i was reading it But I kept thinking that they were trying to get me to, like, sympathize with Hal more and be like, oh, this is... Yeah. But I, I, like, like kind of what you're saying, I was like, I kind of didn't. Like, I still didn't find a ton of redemption in that. I was still like, this guy kind of just sucks. Like, I guess I, them explaining it didn't make things feel not his fault. Yeah, when it came to him... You know, them trying to justify his character. I think that, you know, they, I, I appreciate that they gave you context into yeah. why he is the way he is uh, in the ways that they did. But to make him also so unlikable to the point where, you know, him talking, I think one of the best scenes. And for me as a comic book fan at conventions going up to the tables, I think one of the best scenes was him talking to the guy with the lunchbox. And he's like, oh, yeah, that guy's going to sell it in about 2.5 seconds down the road. And it's yeah. like. That distrust in your clientele, because you know there are there are people like that in the industry. You know, there's collectible people who flip yeah, them and go to yeah. conventions to flip them. Personally, I'm not one of those people. Uh, I can barely get out the words to most creators that I see there. And I'm just one time I met War- Marv Wolfman and he was eating a sandwich and I said you can finish and he said no and I said okay it was the best. <laughs> I was all I'm, I'm I might share that photo, but. That was a that was an uncomfortable moment, but you know I love Teen Titans, so um, you know I've I've been shameless in front of creators. So yeah, that, yeah. Uh, like do, honestly, don't go to a convention I, I with don't me doubt it at all. I will just have at least sixteen like mm-hmm. emotional breakdowns. Mm-hmm. But out when it comes you. to Hal, <laughs> when it comes to Hal, I'm like I really liked I liked I liked his like crotchetiness, and I liked um. The way that he was conveyed, I thought he was actually a really excellent character for the story, and I think that's why I like it a lot, uh, is because he's kind of unredemptive. And the idea of him going to the bar uh, to – that's kind of my dream, is to be Mm -hmm. able to go to the bar at the convention because I see it after a lot of conventions that I go to. And, you know, just think of – you know, for for, for us in the industry or whatever, surf industry – there's the party and then there's the after party and you know all the pros will go hang out at the one spot you know and mm-hmm. so uh going to the bar afterwards with them is the dream you know yeah. so my my so him going to the bar at the convention or like the secret one that all the writers would go mm-hmm. to my dream in the entire world would to be it's like to be at that bar it'd be at that bar and maybe not even talk to them but just know that i am occupying the same space as these people that i adore just and breathe have, the same air not in COVID times, but you know, <laughs> pre or post COVID times, absolutely oh, would breathe their air. Um, mm. It's just like because you know those people obviously have had so much influence on my life and brought so much more value and meaning to uh, you know storytelling and just and my my entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> so valuing that has been it would would be something so special and but also to the point where it's like. Do, would you really want to run into Hal Crane at a bar? No. Exactly. And I, like, I wouldn't even. I would not want Hannah to. would buy him a drink. I probably would. He'd be like, hi, Hal. And he'd say, <laughs> hello, Hannah. And then, that's about as far as that conversation would go. Wait, have you ever been to a convention or any no. sort of convention? No. Really? No. Uh, yes, you have. Agenda is comparable. Oh. Agenda is a trade show for trade show. surf, okay. skate, sure. Is the snowboard industry too? No, I don't think so. Agenda is in Long Beach, and it's a trade uh, show. It might be. Hannah and I have been to Agenda together. It's honestly that's the most comparable thing. Okay. Well, okay. Well, then yes, I I was thinking very specifically to like a Comic Con or like a like a t te- like a entertainment. Yeah. But yes, okay, well, I've, yeah, I've been to Agenda. Oh my gosh, a we good amount of times. We should go to Long Beach Comic Con when it opens back up because that's a good little convention from what I've seen. I didn't even know that that was one. It is a thing and it's cool. Um, okay, Hannah, I guess I got really two more questions for you. It's going to be a short episode this week because it was also a short story this week. Short story. Um, how did you like the twist ending? <laughs> Do I tell them the honest truth? Yes. Which was that I came in today and I said, what was the twist? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, and I told her, I was like, Hal didn't exist. That was the twist. <laughs> and I'm like, 
I'm like, what did I just read? <laughs> I'm like, you seen Fight Club? <laughs> oh, don't get me started. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was cool. I'm confused. Why are you confused still? <laughs> After I explained it to you. <laughs> Where did he get him? He bought him? No. Oh, okay, so for my fans, <laughs> honestly, no was the most disappointed you've ever been. I also in. just want to apologize to the fans of this podcast, not because Hannah and I have done a bad job today, but I just feel like we have not talked about this book at all and we have just We've done ranted. a bad job today. But it's okay cuz you know we're here and it's all Jake's fault. So The first thing you said to me when you gave me the book was this episode is going to be a lot of rant and rambling. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfect. That's true because I think this is just a text that speaks for itself, and I think that you know it's it, it's just and it's also like H- Hannah doesn't know too much about the industry, and I wanted to give her something that she's a team she's familiar with. I know nothing on top of on top of uh, you know something quick that she could read so we could turn out an episode. But um, there were some themes that we talked about, and I think that we we talked about the themes that you know relate to us the most yeah. within what we were reading. And so when it comes to the twist ending, what happened was uh, the assistant who was the narrator of the entire bad weekend came in and Hal had been looking for some art that he thought he had sold or that he thought was taken from him. And it was his, either his favorite piece that he ever worked on or uh, a piece that he was kind of ashamed of. And they never quite tell you what the, was he going to destroy it? Was he going to keep it forever? Was it what mm-hmm. he was most proud of? Because well, it, it was the one that he said was his best work. Yes, but then he's also he also said at the very end in the flashback that I I would just do me a favor, take this and oh, just and burn, burn it. it. Yeah, 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 and so and yeah, and you know it's it's just how kind of wallowing in his, in his own self lo- self loathing. Um, but what happens is you find out that they literally pull a heist to look for this. Yeah. They break into someone who bought the alleged artworks uh, stash and find out that to, in order to look for this piece and you find out that he didn't have it. Mm-hmm. And so then Hal's kind of like, huh, he doesn't know what he did. He's also an alcoholic who has – Clearly can't remember everything. Yeah. And, and you know pe- you know how Crouch deal people like misremember and s- stick to their truth. Uh, Hal, what happens was you find out in a flashback – flashback sequence that he was looking for this piece of art the assistant who had been narrating the entire time had taken the art when hal fell asleep during a flashback scene because hal said take it and burn it the assistant takes it and Mm -hmm. he never burned Mm -hmm. it but the story ends saying maybe i will someday i will yeah but you know and and i think that's so i think that was a beautiful ending it's kind of tragic but it's also it's a it's a good twist and it, it reiterates the theme that like while hal is dislikable and maybe this is true for a lot of artists, not maybe. It's true for a lot of artists. While we don't like the artists themselves, their art lasts yeah. and is still meaningful. Yes. I did I liked that I liked that he had them. Like I liked that that was how this whole this whole book that they're on this like chase and then that like he's the one who had them the whole time. Yeah. Um and I do like the way like the way he ended it with like maybe maybe someday I will. And I think the thing with Hal that I'm like, I still, I'm like, he's just such a sad character to me. Yeah. And so even though I do find him like, you know, crotchety and annoying and grumpy and not. Also slightly attractive. Eh. When do we say that? I'm like, Hannah, you would. <laughs> You'd buy him a drink at the bar. So, <laughs> Hannah's, Hannah's into fake crotchety old men. Uh. No comment. I, that's a but, weird turn, but I went there. <laughs> you <laughs> did. Happy birthday. <laughs> he doesn't fit into my zaddy category, but maybe if we're talking fiction, I'll throw him in there. <laughs> you know, might as well. He's no Kevin Costner. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> He's no Dennis Quaid, <laughs> is really all I'm going to say. He's no anyway, Sam Rockwell. Anyway. Well, Anyways, we, we got to wrap this up. <laughs> all I'm saying is that because I... I didn't like him, and you're right. There was really no redemption to him. And as I've said on the podcast many times, I don't like when there's no redemption. Those stories yeah. don't like sit well with me. But this wasn't like a bad story, yeah. so I, I didn't have. But I felt sad for him. I felt like he was very lonely, very empty, very much chasing something he could never achieve. I, I, whatever, like yeah. success yeah. or yeah. you know his own personal demons. Yeah, exactly. You try to outrun them, and yeah, and and you can't. Well, you can't. And he's he's just kind of spiraling downward by his own accord and i feel like 
that's the part of the character that I was like sad for. Mm. And then kind of to like back to what you were saying about like meeting your heroes and when people don't match up to like what you want them to be. But then on the flip side, like imagine being that person who's everybody's heroes and the burden of having to live up to what other people expect you to be or want you to be. And when you've got a platform of people who worship you, yes, what that looks like is a thousand different people wanting you to be a thousand different things. Yeah, what what their idea of a hero yeah. is. And yeah, I think that goes back. For, personally, that's the kind of perspective I take in the industry now, is because it's like I don't want to ever talk to. You know, because there's a million questions I want to ask a creator, but frankly, they've been asked those same questions a million times, and all they want is to that's why they want to be treated normally because it's like yeah. they don't consider them maybe they do but they don't quite consider themselves so special right it's really more along the lines of you know i created the thing and also i only know i know them in context of their work i don't know mm-hmm. who they are as a person mm-hmm. you know so they want to be treated like normally and so i can uh, that's why we were at the point now where we can separate the person from the art yeah and so that's i think that's a really good point that you made because mm-hmm. it's it goes back to, you know, just, just appreciate their art and, you know, I guess uh, I, I'd argue, like, buy, buy their art, you know? Yeah. And that's the best way you can show yeah. support to them, you know? And so, and also buy from local comic shops. This one's purchased at <laughs> Limited Edition Comics in Cedar Falls, Iowa. Love you, Rob. Um, okay, Hannah, last question. What would you rate this story out of 10? And no, you don't compare it to the last story. What I'm, you're not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. People do that, and I'm like, no. You read this one. It's fresh on your mind. What? What's the number? Okay, I'm going to be honest. I didn't love it. Mm-hmm. So, like, a six. Oh, okay. A five, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Ex- <laughs> this is dealing with a lot of themes and, like, a lot of, like, situations that are kind of out of your real house. So yeah. So, that's not... Well, wait, what is it? Is it a five or a six? It's five. Dang, a half. So it's it... five and a half. Oh, Because wow. I really liked the ending. <laughs> So I, can't I don't extra hey, half. that is beyond me. Um for me I actually think I give this story an 8. Okay, wow. That's Because it's a lot of easter eggs for me. And okay, like it's fair, I think it's fair, it's I think fair. just the tragic character of the creator is um fascinating. And like I really do like the 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 empathy that we can have towards someone like Hal Crane, but then the um the 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 the, the tragic the tragedy that comes with that character, but he stayed consistent through the whole time. Mm -hmm. And that's what I liked about him Mm -hmm. is that at the very end, you know, we got that moment of, yeah, he gave the speech that everyone wanted to hear. And then he punched the fool in the face. I'm like, I liked that because I think that was more satisfying. I was, I was satisfied in the story. It was also a critique in a a glance into an industry that I love. Mm -hmm. And it was, I think a very real take on an industry that I love. Mm -hmm. So the way that it handled that was amazing. Um, so yes, again, I, I'm a huge fan of this story and I thought it was just very well done, but you know, it's not my favorite criminal universe story, but I thought it was incredibly exceptional mm-hmm. and I liked the twist ending too. Cause it was kind of like, he still had a hero. Yeah. Although whether you always are able to like talk me up a few notches after I give my rating and then you tell me why you gave it a higher rating and then I'm like, oh, okay, maybe he's not wrong. So oh. like I might land on a six. We're going to land on a six today. Thank you, Hannah, so much for hanging out with us at Cameron's Comics. Um, and this episode is dedicated to everyone except for Jake. Um, I stand by that statement. Um, make sure to go leave us a five-star rating and review on iTunes. And go follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. I'm going to do a video review for this story very soon. So make sure to go check that out. Uh, those are all my plugs. Hannah, thank you so much for hanging out with us. We love you. Mean it. Have a good birthday, girl. Thanks so much. Smile you later. Bye.